Hello, Commander. Welcome to the official Starborn podcast. I'm your host, Admiral, and in this live stream, I'm going to go over my starting strategy for all the new players and answer your questions AMA style format. Uh, I'll be checking the Discord uh, that we have set up as well as the YouTube stream. So forgive me if I don't answer your questions right away, but I'll do my best to get through it all. Hopefully the volume is uh, loud and clear for you. I know it's a uh, common feedback I get. I just tendly, generally tend to be a little bit of a low voice. So let's get started. So to start, I'm going to just go over my strat starting strategy. This is my first station. Uh, you're going to start at level one. And so what I kind of do first things first is I work through the easy achievements in the tutorial here um, just go through them all a lot of them you can actually complete right away changing your tactics make sure you read everything uh, on how to do that so changing tactics you're gonna go into the tactics tab and just click on a different one and apply it Let's see here. You can also change your docking restrictions. That gives you experience. You really want to get as much experience as you can uh, before anything. So we'll go into uh, logistics station and then you can just change your docking permissions here in order to get that achievement. Make sure you again make sure you read these achievements. Um, join, create or join an alliance. You can find that in the politics tab. Uh, spy station it can be any station but you can ideally you just spy your NPC you right click it and click spy you get a spy report which you can read see what kind of defenses and resources are in that station and uh, let's see crafting a card there's uh, plenty of achieve achievements for that uh, first card and uh, let's see breaking down a card as well first card I would craft hmm tough call you can craft Willy Gamish. Um, that's that's a good start, generally. Um, to do that, you would go into inventory, type, click on show all cards, type in Willy. There he is. So this will cost you some credits, which you can get from some achievements, as well as um, some supply offers. This is the store. Uh, if, if there was anything I was going to recommend, it would be to buy these supply offers as well as the uh, premium subscription, uh, premium permit right here. Uh, you can get the premium permit from some special offers. It's, you know, this is kind of, consider it like your monthly subscription kind of deal. Uh, I highly recommend it. Um, generally, you know, between these, you can um, just buying this alone. If there's one thing you'd buy, it would be this probably. But I really also like the uh, supply offers here. Um, check out the rest of the store. There's plenty of other options there. Uh, let's see here. Let's go into back to the tutorial again there's there's so many more exchange resources this is an easy one you can exchange just four of any resource for one of another to get this achievement uh, try to really focus on all your experience let's see here I'm gonna go ahead and actually go into the discord and make an announcement Let's go ahead and get everyone in here. And now let's put the same link in here. Mm. 
Let's just spam everyone. Get maximum participation. All right. So, what we'll do is go into general chat. That looks like my industrials are back. I'm going to go ahead and send them out over here. Ooh, 33,000. And I can take all of it. Let's do that. All right. So, kind of going back into it, guys. Um, you know, what to do when you first start, get through all the easy tutorial achievements, uh, get all that experience. Um, kind of the next step you're going to do is you, you start out with a, f uh, a couple fleets. You're going to create one of each type of fleet, Corvette, Patrol, Industrial, and Scout. Um, and that will actually give you some more ships for achievements, and you're going to use those ships. Um, to start off raiding your Marauder for resources. Um, assuming you've got that down, to, to raid a Marauder, you're just going to right click it, click attack, raid, and then select your units. Okay, and that's going to get you some nice early starting resources. I'm assuming, you know, I can't go through everything, otherwise we'll just go through all, like, <laughs> hours upon hours of depth in this game. But I'm assuming you kind of know the basics already here. Um, I'm going to answer any questions that come to, to me here. And uh, hopefully hopefully we'll uh, be able to just help the newbies out. Um, so I'm going to show, share a pro tip with you guys right off the bat. How, Admiral, how the hell did you get such like maximum level industrial fleets and... At, you know almost maximum level scouts well with um, enough scouts roughly 135 for level 1 scout fleets uh, you can actually just machine gun sabotage your level 1 NPC station and what that will do is give you experience every time you sabotage and so you can see by mousing over your fleet that you get, uh, you actually get experience for sabotaging. Like, let's see here, I got one that's almost. Let's see here. Here we go. Look at that. I'm almost level four, which is the maximum level. Um, maxing out your s scout fleets this way using sabotage is great because then, once it's max level, you can change, convert the fleet to change the type. And I actually already did that once to get a second max level industrial fleet. Okay, well, what do these levels do for you? Well, it's amazing stuff, really. Um, you can see in the shipyard what you gain for every fleet level. So for patrol ships, it's more hit points and firepower. This early on, it's actually really handy. Uh, the extra firepower is really handy for completing um, missions. Uh, scouts, hit points and firepower, albeit not as much. But um, the real trick here is industrials. Um, at max level, you, you get an additional three speed. And, you know, industrials are very important early game. You know, max speed industrials are key um, for uh, a, a decent start. So to give you an idea of what kind of speeds you can achieve, so the base starting speed for industrials is three, right? But what you can do is really start adding to your speed. Let's look at my movements right now, my current industrials. Let's see. Well, I'm... Yeah, well, no, that's not me. Let's see here. Here we go. So I'm hitting a solar flare at 22 hexes per hour. And here, here it's 20 hexes per hour. So that's pretty amazing. 22 hexes per hour lets me hit the solar flares in all these farther out stars, something that you could never do at 3 hexes per hour. So really aim to boost your speeds. But additionally, beyond boosting your speeds, you're also going to want to boost your um, plasma cargo. So 
Admiral, how do you get those kinds of speeds? First thing I did was I built a level 5 Stargate as soon as I could afford it. Mind you, this is very expensive. I wouldn't recommend going for a level 5 right out the gate unless you really know what you're doing. Um, but, you know, once you do get to level 5 Stargate, you can also card your industrial fleets with Borts, which gives plus 1 speed and Spatial Convex, which gives another plus one speed. There's a station card once you hit station level four, Malastrad, that gives you uh, three speed and 10% plasma cargo. This is really amazing um, day one, day two, once you hit station level four. Um, make sure you abuse the hell out of it for the next five days. So let's see, that's three the fleet has two so that's five plus the base is eight um, stargate gives another five that's 13. let's go let's see policies here uh, scramble is a wild card policy gives two that's 15. gemini express is another two that's 17. Uh, and the malastrad gives three the, that's the station card that makes it 20. Uh, Let's see, I believe, what else is there? I'm sure there's another one. Um, well, there's also a station card here. This is actually a really easy way to do this. You click on industrial in your inventory, you click on, um, and then you just type in speed. Okay, and you can see, um, Plasma speed, that's boards, so that's good. Uh, pl uh, this is a station card, flare monitors, gives plus two speed. I could actually boost my speed even more, but I'm not using this card right now. Um, Jade Lotus gives four speed, which is really nice, but you uh, you lose the 10% plasma cargo. So, and you're probably not going to get one of these unless you just got lucky in a uh, st store uh, supply offer. Uh, let's see here, uh, Spatial Convex, you know, plus two speed, the Vortex Rift, I'm going to start using this in a little bit. Yeah, so that's your fleet and station cards, looks like. It's interesting, um, not all of the cards are in here. So let's go into actually let's let's answer some questions. See what questions everyone's got. Uh, I don't see any. Hmm. Well, let's check YouTube. Here we go. Hey, derpy dog. Hey, doll. I'm good. Do I think mining colony on the starting station is worth it, even though its position is quite weak? Yes, Mark MacArthur. I like it. Um, you get a card uh, as the alpha progresses. Uh, I, I can't select the option, but the idea is modify outpost, downgrade, and you can use a salvage team card. Now, you only get a few of these, and it's really to fix um, outpost placements where you messed up. But once you absolutely know exactly where your outposts are going and you, you're you know that you're doing it right you can use these salvage team cards strategically to uh, refund your commodities back um, later on and use them elsewhere so for that early game lead I mean this outpost is really expensive to upgrade uh, but you can see I upgraded mine to five it was it was one of the last outposts that I upgraded um, I basically started with maxing out my mining facilities and using repair drones, crafting repair drones and miners guild. So repair drones extends the radius of my mining facilities by one and the miners guild basically removes the penalty that the repair drones gives me. So what you can see is each of my mining facilities harvests in a two radius and you and I actually selected where to put my mining facilities. I planned it out based on um, where it would hit roughly 13 to 15 points of 
resources, mining fields, it does not affect planets or moons. So you can see here, it's like we can kind of count this out. This is worth three points. Nope, that's 120. That's two. Nope, that's three. Yeah, three, uh, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen points. So that's just from one mining facility. You do that essentially with all four of your mining, three of your mining facilities. As soon as you upgrade one mining facility to level five, you get a second, um, you get a, a card called Mining Cabal as an achievement reward that lets you build your fourth. And so building out four, you can only do that on your capital, which is your starting station to start. Uh, building them out and upgrading them, getting repair drone, miner's guild is a really effective start. Now, recently they did make it so you can have two repair drone cards for a radius of three at um, a lower effectiveness overall. Uh, I'm not going to go into that. It is a viable strategy, um, but you'd have to really pay attention because you're now looking at a three hex radius mining facility for each of your mining facilities. Um, I haven't run the numbers because again you do get a little penalty for each of these cards you have. So uh, as far as the mining colony question, yes I would build it um, because later on I can always salvage it, rebuild it for one level one mining colony because uh, you need to have those mining colonies at least one level in order to get the company. So you can see my build order, uh, what I'm choosing to build right now is heavy in domain and maxing out industrial uh, 089 build um, and that's going to give me this company once I build this to level 10 the transgalactic exports gives me 25 freighters which become insanely important later on uh, and a boost to freighters departing from the station so this is going to help me logistically um, feed and build my, my second, third, fourth station. Actually, it already is. Um, one of the outposts I built already maxed it out. Trading port level five uh, gives you streamers. And these streamers lets you, we'll go to the logistics tab, freighters, um, stream. And you can see I'm actually streaming about 3K resources to my second station. And that's already been so invaluable. I mean, my second station is getting 2K res now. I just hit level four. Um, and it's still kind of in the st stages of building up. Let's see. How do you know when there is a solar flare? Well, there's a couple of things you need to know. Um, solar flares spawn on suns, but um, you can't see them unless you have scan strength on the star. Uh, you or your allies. So I would definitely join an alliance. Um, make sure everyone has... Actually, I don't even think you need an outpost. You're just your base station scan strength. Um, you can see here. I'm actually not within range of this star, so I had to drop a, uh, a probe. Okay. The idea is if a star is within your station scan strength, you don't need to worry about dropping a probe. When there's a solar flare, you'll see it. Um, this is a solar flare right here. It's really hard to see until you zoom out. Um, in, I like to look at, at it in the standard view mode. You can zoom out and you can see, up oh, there's a solar flare. Let's kind of drag the mouse around, look around. I just finished a solar flare there. Hmm. Yeah, I don't see any other solar flares. The RNG gods do not like me. Uh, there's another one, but that one's really far, and some looks like somebody else might be hitting it soon. So, let's go back to this one. So, I found a solar flare. How do you harvest it? You're going to right-click it, click Explore, View Solar Flare. And then this gives you all kinds of information. Um, one thing that's nice about boosting your industrial speeds as much as possible, I mean, you can reach like 22, 23 hexes per hour if you uh, card even more than that, I think, if you card effectively. But the nice thing is, uh, as you get those faster speeds, you can reach not only farther stars, but close stars with a very little remaining amount of time. Um, I think I will have time. Let's see, my solar flares are returning in two hours. Actually, I already have a, an industrial going to this one. <laughs> but um, the idea is, uh, unfortunately, I can't select. Here we go. Let's let's just say this is an industrial fleet. Well, I don't have any uh, cargo space conversion because it's not an industrial fleet. But uh, with carding, 
your uh, plasma cargo uh, or start harvester 24% plasma cargo plus the policies as well as the uh, buildings here plasma chamber gives you plasma cargo as well right there that's kind of a like a force multiplier um, as well as plasma refinery also helps you increase your cargo space for harvesting solar flares uh, those are essentially the the buildings to go after if you want to max out your solar flares I'm already one shotting them um, but the idea is okay you know at 15 speed travel time is an hour I'll be able to beat it here and you know that's kind of what I'm doing with my industrials um, what sh therefore I would recommend the ships to build would be industrials right off the bat um, unless you're going for like a raider type build there's essentially two types of uh, play styles you can go pure raiding offensively where you just make a bunch of corvette fleets and then you turn around and you just raid with prejudice everyone else's level one uh, NPC you can see there's one there actually let's see if we can here we go so you can see there's a level one NPC there there's one there there's one there there's one there um, and the thing that's really nice about hitting all these NPCs is the resources you get are a little bit more balanced, a little bit more newbie friendly. You just don't get as much of them. The thing that sucks about solar flares is you only get a lot, a lot of one specific resource. So you can see I've been hitting solar flares. I am really short on gas right now compared to my crystal and metal. Uh, and I'm about to get even more metal. So I'm kind of flirting with the cap on metal and crystal, but you know this is my new uh, kind of hamstring resource so what I might build you know to kind of level out my resource production is uh, you know gas basic gas production or I might build buildings that are heavy in metal usage and uh, industrial usage um, let's see here what other questions we got did you have to use any COs on events to get the commodities for your mining facilities? Uh, I didn't have to, but I chose to. Um, I like having uh, enough commodities to get my early start. Um, so I did use a few CO cards to just fast track my events. We'll go to events here and you can see um, I've already got 12 of my 18 done uh, for steel slabs, 5 of the carbon, 2 of the titanium done, and I fast-tracked. I used my CO cards, because these each take 24 hours. Um, I used my CO cards pretty liberally here. I, I really love CO cards. There's, there, you can use them in so many different ways. Um, but, you know, if anything, you know, for the average player who doesn't want to spend a bunch of CO cards I would recommend just focusing most of your um, most of your time getting the these steel slabs you, you're gonna need them all for your mining facilities you're gonna get uh, diamond nano rods um, through achievements and whatnot but really focus on your steel slabs uh, eventually once your mining facilities max out you're gonna want to get some carbon uh, plates uh, and then start working on your stargate um, and then, yeah, it's just, again, I mean, four level five mining facilities, that's 20 steel slabs. Okay, so you can you can kind of run that math. And then for a level five Stargate, that's five more steel slabs. So you basically don't want to stop till you have 25 steel slabs. And then uh, you can start doing the carbon plate events to one or two to start working on your Stargate. Let's see here. Any other questions? No, nothing in YouTube. Let's check Discord. No, I don't see any chat in Discord. I guess it's fairly quiet. Hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, in that case, I'll just go into, yep, here we go, power leveling our fleets. You just machine gun sabotage. And that's going to, again, help me power level my fleets. Um, let's just kind of restart this and go back to the beginning. Um, 
what's what build order I feel like you know I'm a newbie what should I build um, when you first start you uh, you basically start with one station with this building maxed out to level 10 and uh, warehouse I believe uh, I don't know I think you start at level 3 maybe no level 1 in any case what you're really gonna want to do is build one level of every building okay uh, and then you're gonna want to kind of build you can well basically you're gonna want to power level your command center to level six or seven um, I believe seven is when you get your next resource achievement from command center I would say stop at five and well, let's see here what am I doing let's go back here stop at five use your re resource achievements um, and build up the these remaining buildings um, each to level three and then build these two up to level five and then take this the rest of the way to seven that should get you the option to upgrade your station at some point you can upgrade your station and then uh, build one level of each building um, I wouldn't recommend splitting it out among th all three tiers because you do get a resource achievement for completing a tier so that's why I, that's what I did here okay so one level of each one level of each here um, and then that should give you enough resource achievements to hit command center 10 hit that max out these two buildings um, and then start just leveling up the rest of your buildings fairly evenly okay um, by evenly I mean in like two level spurts so you get resource achievements at level 1 uh, level 3 at level 5 and at level 7 and then at level 10 I wouldn't recommend going for any level 10 buildings right off the bat except for these two and for the command center so generally you're gonna want to level them up fairly evenly level 3 level 5 you know across the board and then level 7 uh, warehouse you could probably get away with keeping that at level uh, 5 okay um, if you find that you're not very active you may choose to upgrade this uh, a little bit more so you don't hit your res cap while your stations are working but as soon as you build these three buildings you should hopefully be have have crafted enough industrials um, as well as the resource achievements for completing this tier um, to build a mining facility level one so as soon as you do that you um, you get a ton of experience and then what you're gonna want to do is and you also get industrials what you're gonna want to do is take those industrials put them back in the fleet you might need to send uh, a couple other fleets in escort for extra cargo space and upgrade that mining facility right away um, once you hit mining facility level 2 you get an achievement for upgrading your um, outpost and that gives you 600 experience after you get this achievement completed and all the other easy cheap uh, easy uh, to complete ones for extra experience like enhanced breakdown um, you should be around level oh god I don't even remember uh, but you get a ton of experience and the idea is you don't want to uh, accept your daily challenges until you've upgraded the outpost got all the major experience from achievements once you start at a higher level once you get at a higher level because of all these achievement experiences these numbers change they actually go up based on your current level and they don't lock in until you claim them so you know I'm gonna level let's see here I'm gonna level in five hours and the daily reset ends in nine hours so that's why I haven't accepted these is because I'm gonna level up uh, before the daily reset uh, and that's gonna boost these numbers up even more so that way I can maximize the experience I get for accomplishing my uh, daily achievements little pro tip there let's go back to YouTube and see ah we got some new questions here it looks like uh, let's see how to find missions all right, yeah, we can find some missions. Um, well, that was kind of a mistake on my part, sending them out to sabotage. Um, that's a question that's asked around a lot. So missions is going to be exploration view mode. Um, 
you can see my station scan strength uh, if you just mouse over it, it's 420. It's because I've been upgrading this outpost, the scanner outpost. Um, but usually you start off with no scanner and a, just a very basic scan strength. Let's see if we can find a player. Yeah, so there's some kind of player around here. Probably this guy. Yeah, probably this guy. Um, you basically start with just 10 scan strength around your station in a fairly decent radius. Let's see if we can find something. Here you go. So just mousing over, you can see the highlighted area of where the station's scan strength currently is. Nope, that's not it. Uh, that's actually its claim. Huh. Well, this is your scan strength for your starting station. It's 10, basically. And what you get at 10 scan strength around your station, it's roughly a 10 hex radius. Uh, it's really hard to see the border, but if you zoom in really closely, you can see where my scan strength ends. It's just like this, these purple lines um, versus nothing, versus clear space. That's in the exploration view mode. So um, in that 10 hex radius, you'll start getting mission hints. Okay, these mission hints, ooh. you know, again, we're in the exploration view mode. These mission hints basically say in the, uh, somewhere in this area is a mission. Okay, now um, the mission is always in the middle of a mission hint. So you can click right here. I can tell you with 100% certainty there's a mission right here. If I send a scout, see... I don't have scouts here. Damn, that kind of sucks. So I can't really show you right now, but uh, I'll get to it as soon as my scouts return in four minutes. Uh, but if I send a scout here, I right click, click explore, click scan, select a scout fleet and hit send. Um, on this spot, a level one mission will occur. Okay, so level one missions basically project one radius of hints around it. A level two mission will project two radius of hints around it, but the mission will always be in the middle and you can always reveal it by dropping a probe right in the middle. So what are these brighter one uh, highlights? Okay, so the idea is if there are ever two missions that are close enough where their hints are overlapping, they kind of highlight. This means there are multiple hints on this hex. Okay, so I can tell you right here that this is two level one mission missions right here and right here. So if you just look at kind of segment them, you've got one mission here with a radius of hints, okay, and one mission here with a radius of hints. Because they're level one, this one that won't reach a hint, project a hint out here. That's too far. That's why there's only one hint. But from here, these two missions both share these four hexes as kind of hint radius. So there's a level one here and a level one here. Let's kind of find you another example. Another clean and easy one. So here's one. So um, as you start leveling up your scanner outpost uh, and increasing your scan strength, you're going to start getting much larger radius hints. Um, these are higher level missions. Uh, the way to find these is just to kind of intersect the corners of the missions until you hit the middle. So I like to go one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. Okay, so it's going to be here. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so one, two, three, four. Ooh, I don't know. I actually, I think it's, I think it's right here. There's four hexes in all directions right here. Okay, um, you can see though the hints kind of drop off. They cut out here because it's outside of my scan strength uh, of my station. But all I need really are two corners to intersect to get an idea of where the mission is. So if I drop a probe right here, I'll find a level four mission. Level one, level two, level three, level four. So the level four mission right here. Um, the other thing to note, as you upgrade your scanner, you're going to see... Um, at level scanner level two, all level one missions will automatically be revealed. At level three, 
uh, all level 2 missions will automatically be revealed. And at scanner uh, level 4, all level 3 missions will automatically be revealed. Um, so, again, I can't even do level 3s yet. Um, it's a lot of firepower. 174,000. And there are ways to reduce this. Um, there are multiple ways, but and we'll go over that in a separate time. But the idea is you generally build up more ships. Patrol ships are ideal for, for missions. Uh, but so are corvettes and scouts, depending on the kind of mission. You'll find um, patrol ships are the more, most versatile because you can card them to run defensive and offensive missions. Uh, but you'll need scouts for the uh, exploration missions. So like uh, right here, this blue one, these blue ones, these are require scouts. Um, the shield and the little alien here, those require defensive ships. And then there's like a couple crossed swords somewhere here. These require corvettes. But you can card the patrol ships to run these missions as well. So if you really want to go heavy in missions, I would advise a mix between patrols and scouts. Um, there's also a really cool tip with that. Let's say you have a thousand scouts with a ton of firepower. You can just add one patrol ship fleet with one patrol ship in it um, and be able to use the scouts firepower to assist in uh, completing a defensive mission. Just looking at it again you can see like it just requires an assault fleet. It doesn't have to have all their firepower from the assault fleet. Makes sense? So. Uh, yeah, so we kind of went over drop here. Now we can drop a probe, and I just leveled up to max level on that. That's great. So what we'll do, I, too bad we don't have time lapse, otherwise I could show you really fast. But what we'll do is we'll just drop a probe right in the middle. That's going to take 16 minutes. And then you'll see the mission reveal like this right here. And reveal that one. Let's see if we can find something closer. So you can see here, um, there's actually overlap of maybe two or three missions. This this actually becomes much harder to identify all the missions. But what I like to do is reveal one at a time, and it'll kind of clear up the hints for the other ones and help you identify. Okay, so let's see here, right here, one, two, three corners. So I kind of want to intersect. I, th I believe there's a mission right here because it kind of intersects the three corners. So we'll go ahead and drop a probe here, and we'll see what happens. This one, let's go ahead and say, uh, also, uh, pro tip for you newbies, uh, when you first start, uh, you kind of want to do an, a raid, you want to do an assault, okay, because you get achievements for it, and you're going to want to do a sabotage. Uh, also, make sure you spy it. Do one of each type of offensive movement against the level one, and it will get you some extra... Um, uh, cards that you can use or or more specifically break down so let's see what's my future plan for stations my future plan for stations um, you know what I actually am as you can tell by my station names uh, retired <laughs> uh, I'm n not leading uh, any coalition or alliance I just want to be a farm boy I'm going to be trying out something that's been kind of on my mind for a while now with all these changes. I'm going to try a pure industrial build. Um, I want to see how far I can get. Maybe solo build a forward operating base or a line station. Um, you know, I will have some defenses in place uh, for all those trolls and haters out there. But... Uh, Beyond that, I'm going to see how far I can take the resource production game. Uh, as far as future stations go, level one, I like going industri industrial uh, and maximizing passive resource generation and solar flare resource generation. Um, I go domain to assist in running missions and for the speed bo boosts. The Stargate is just so essential. Uh, no matter what playstyle you start with, either raiding or uh, solar flares, you, you just you gotta focus on trying to build that up as soon as you can uh, without hamstringing yourself. Also, pro tip: um, if you're ever starving for resources, 
build your basic resource production buildings. They take a long time to build, and but they're fairly cheap, and they actually improve your resource pa passive res resource production. So going on to my second station, your second station should always be in a location where um, where you can build a commerce hub. Uh, a commerce hub is a unique outpost. I'll pull it up here. Here you go. It's a unique outpost that you basically build um, and expand the radius of influence of in order to generate credits, which formerly known as prestige, uh, per hour. These credits let you craft cards uh, for the most part, and maybe even buy certain cards. <clears throat> Let's get some water here. Maybe even buy certain cards, um, but this is how you're going to generate credits. Um, most of your credits, I should say, uh, you get 0.4 credits per hour for each resource field within its radius of influence. It starts with a radius of influence of one. So you can see where I built my station. I actually didn't build this in the ideal location, but my ideal commerce hub location is right here. Um, and the reason for that is because I can card my station. Let's go ahead and go Commerce Hub. You can see there's Stock Exchange and there's Entertainment Complex. And unfortunately, these are still unique, so you can only have one of each. Uh, but the idea is you get an extra plus two radius, making it a three radius outpost. So actually, let's see here if we can... Um, Let's take a screenshot right here. I have something I can kind of show you. If I can find it. Here it is. Here we go. So this is kind of um, an image I took as part of the tutorial. So once you place your Commerce Hub here, this is the base radius of the Commerce Hub, and then you card it. Uh, with those two cards I sh showed you and you can hit in this case specific spot 17 mining fields again no planets no moons just the resource fields okay I hit 17 and that's gonna get me 17 times 0 0.4 per hour let's pull up our calculator so what is that 6.8 per hour times 24 is, oh, that can't be right. Oh, it's 0 0.4 per level, per uh, per radius. So once you upgrade your Commerce Hub to level 5, that's uh, 2 Prestige, I believe. Yes. Uh, 2 Prestige times 17 resource fields is 34 Prestige per hour. Okay, times 24 hours is 816 Prestige. Um... So basically, that is roughly, uh, what, one legendary every two days? One legendary permanent card every two days? So that's, that's how important your Commerce Hub is. This is probably the most important outpost in the game. Um, generating those credits allows you to buy permanent, um, well, for the server, permanent cards for your stations for your fleets and really manage the overall effectiveness of your empire so um, you know you're going to want to spend say make sure you have enough credits saved up to craft that legendary and epic epic commerce hub card um, the two that i showed you earlier i'm just going to type in commerce hub yeah okay and you get this card at level i believe it's level 25 maybe level 20 somewhere around there um, make sure you have enough credits to craft these and apply them right away make sure you have enough commodities saved up uh, because the commerce hub let's see here let's go back to the building planner I believe the commerce hub requires uh, it doesn't say it here but it requires one of each type of commodity so in this case you're gonna need a, each level of commerce hub is gonna require a titanium block a steel slab a carbon plate, um, I believe also a diamond nano. So you need to make sure you have five of each um, saved up for your commerce hub. Just max out that level. It's also fairly expensive to build, so make sure um, 
you've got the resources for it as well. Um, worst case scenario, you just upgrade it as soon as you can. You don't have to, you know, I'm planning on power leveling it to five right off the bat. Also make sure you get it augmented by an augmenting player. Um, augmenting is kind of described in your faction. So Terran Combine can uh, augment outposts. So uh, you can select your industrial fleet and right click on an outpost and use that fleet just to augment it. You get, uh, let's see here, you get maximum of three augment points uh, and you generate one every four hours. You can turn around, select your industrial fleet, right click the outpost and augment it, gives it a boost. And each outpost gets a different kind of boost. Um, but highly recommend you augment your uh, commerce hub right away. It takes a ton of industrials, so um, you know you might want to ask a, an industrial specialist to help you with that. Let's see. Uh, I hope I answered your question. Uh, I kind of go all over the place. That's me long-winded. Uh, so yeah, second station, uh, commerce hub station, third station. Um, probably going to be a military building um, HSA station uh, going maximum down here for the sector command and build the heavy ship assembly uh, I don't know whether I'll be domain or industrial for that station for my second or for my company I have to decide what company I want but the idea is by building that HSA to level 5 I will be getting a gunship card a gunship production card the warhead factory um, and the allows me to produce gunships. Now gunships are a heavy ship, so the bonuses of building the heavy ship assembly apply to the gunship production building. And this is really nice because you can build a ton of gunships insanely fast and you can never have enough gunships. They're the, the, the primary, primary uh, ship that can destroy stations and station buildings. You're going to need that a lot of that in the uh, future PvP. So, you know, build that out. Level th third station is probably a good idea. Uh, also, it gives you the capability of building the troop carrier for conquering stations later on. Uh, it's gotten much more expensive and it costs 12 IP uh, to build one troop carrier whereas uh, a just normal station build only costs 10. So there is kind of a give and take as to whether you're going to conquer a station or just um, build a new one. You kind of have to decide if the loss of two IP is worth it. Uh, basically, you can build six stations or conquer five. Um, the thing that's nice about conquering, despite the expensive resource cost, is it saves you a ton in time and resources um, to actually conquer a maxed out level four station, uh, especially if time is of the essence, um, as opposed to building the station. You know, let's say, uh, you know, let's say we're at, in a race to conquer this station, right? Uh, or to take this grand terrestrial planet. And there's a race between these two alliances, these two sectors to get here. And, you know, let's say they've got a forward operating base here with fleets parked ready to attack. Well, if I build a new station here, they're going to destroy the new station. I won't be able to defend it. But if I conquer this station, I'll get enough operating fleet slots right off the bat to park a very heavy defense. And so it makes much more sense for me to conquer this, park my defenses there, and keep the Grand Terrestrial Point, which is that little triangle you see here. Okay, uh, Better to conquer this, keep you know, keep it defensible and get a ton of fleets in there and uh, defense. So that's kind of the intent of conquering stations, um, really to be used aggressively as forward operating bases uh, in defense and attack. Um, because again, a level one station is really easy to destroy and it's very hard to defend. Uh, yes, administrators. All right. I know you know what these are, but I'll go ahead and tell you. Um, so the idea is at level one, uh, you have a uh, station level one, you have no administrators. Uh, once you upgrade to station tier two, you get six administrators. You can see actually just by hovering right over here, six, six, and five per station level. So that's a total of uh, 17 administrators, okay? Um, those administrators it require you <clears throat> requires one administrator 
per new building you built. So at level one, I got six administrators. I chose these six buildings of my nine options. Okay. Uh, alternatively, I could have just, um, you know, built, what is it? Uh, you know, I could have built, you know, one less building in this tree, <clears throat> tree and built one here. Time for more water. So, uh, uh, let's see. Uh, that's the administrators. You're going to get six um, per station level and then five for your last. So, my second level, what I did was I used my six administrators to kind of continue down the same lines. Um, and then for my la last five, I chose these five right here. Now, you need to have um, this in, you need to have the bottom building constructed to gain access to the tier four outpost, whichever case that, <clears throat> whichever case they may be. Um, but once you get that, and then you have to make sure you get five administrators in this kind of fashion, you can see the lines, um, in order to get, gain access to this company. These companies are really important. You want to aim to get a company in every station. Uh, for my first station, I'm aiming for transgalactic export. You can see it requires communication array level 10 and a mining colony. Okay, so mining colony, in order to get a mining colony, you need to have this building. In order to get this building, you need every building in the tree. Okay, and that requires nine administrators. So always aim for some variant of nine bu uh, buildings in one tree, five buildings on the right side of a secondary tree, um, and three buildings where wherever you want. Okay, um, and so, so that's kind of the uh, role of administrators. Let's see. Uh, I'm not going to go into politics. Not not this. Not for this. This is kind of to help the newbies out. Um, what else we got here? Also, can you talk about what you feel the major changes are between Alpha 8 and 9? Uh, major changes, man. <laughs> There's a lot of them. Uh, I don't even know where to start. Uh, almost every aspect of this game was changed. Uh, while the building planner looks similar to Alpha 8, the buildings are um, a bit different. Um, let's see. God. I mean, what's changed? Alpha 8 versus Alpha 9? Um, well, in Alpha 9, you can build um, forward operating bases. Forward operating bases are like mobile stations that you can literally hop, skip, and jump around uh, places um, and attack and defend. Um, it's really a great uh, way to move a bunch of fleets and hit uh, enemy players in shorter flight times. Um, policies. Uh, policies Alpha 9 are amazing. Um, these It's much more customizable than uh, what they were in Alpha 8. Uh, the idea is, you know, you can choose a faction, uh, I, I believe starting at level 5, uh, you get three free factions and you can um, get the option to buy one of the other three. And you can see, actually, I bought Tian Chao. Uh, but uh, I'm going with Terran Combine right now. And the idea is each of these factions give you a unique set of bonuses, a unique ship, and specific types of slots. Okay. So with Terran Combine, I can augment outposts, and my buildings are cheaper to build, and my industrials um, actually have more cargo space, which fits right into my solar flare uh, strategy, um, and augmenting, and outpost building, and whatnot. And so after I join a faction, I have to decide what to do with these slots. As I level up, you can see, as you level up, you gain, uh, basically every two levels it looks like, you gain access um, to some more types of <clears throat> of policy cards so uh, what you do is you just select a card and then apply it um, to get the bonus some of these cards also have kind of like penalties uh, actually I don't see any penalties in industrial but uh, in let's say domain there's a few like monitor the people 
resettlement is really bad you know yeah it's good and bad um, but you lose a claim radius in all your stations but you harvest more in them um, you know land leasing you produce less resources but you get more labor that kind of stuff so um, you know and the, t the card has to fit the color obviously the slot military for military uh, wild card you can actually apply any card but the wild card cards themselves are actually pretty amazing they're they're the strongest um, I like to go for maximum speed for my industrials so you could get two here and since industrials are light uh, fleets they get an additional two uh, let's see uh, I mean what else uh, there are a bunch of new cards in the game commerce hubs are now a unique outpost you only get one um, you can build HSAs which were previously a unique outpost you can build as many of these as you have stations for. It's now uh, part of the military line. So, I mean, the first server in Alpha 9, there were players who did nothing but produce heavy ships in all of their stations. And then they fed those ships to their allies. And those allies were active and they knew how to use them. And it was, like, so costly to take them out. I mean, nothing but um, heavy ships... It's, you know, heavy ships are stronger than light ships. And um, let me tell you, man, when you have overwhelming firepower and hit points like that, it actually costs you less to uh, in losses in PvP. So, yeah, uh, you can build an infinite, well, not infinite, but uh, every station can build heavy ships. That's, that's pretty cool stuff. Um, you know, feel free to let me know if I'm missing anything. My voice is starting to get a little raw. Get some more water in me. How many days I'm in? Uh, let's see. Uh, this is actually, I believe, the what third day. You get seven days of ESA. And so I started roughly, what, uh, three days ago, looks like. Is that right? Let's look here. Oh, look at that, devs. API is not updating. Yes, all day one. Let's try it again. I don't know. I don't know what's going on there. Let's go to politics. Here we go. Uh... Yeah, it doesn't say here how many days we're in. I think I think we're like three days in, guys. Something like that. Yeah, I don't know what's going there. I gotta relog to fix that, probably. Uh, let's see here. Can I predict the one at my right? I don't know what you're talking about. Camper Sam, sorry. Uh, you know, you're right, Stoof. I think it could be day, day three. We're just starting. Uh, can you talk about political problems? And nope, I'm not gonna talk political. So I'm seeing that second station pulling resources from outside its immediate res area. Well, basically, um, for every station level you have, it increases your claim. And you can harvest anything that your station has claim on. Okay, so I'm not... I'm not uh, harvesting anything outside of my claim. So the event system, the event system is pretty awesome uh, compared to Alpha 8. Um, the idea is uh, you get several, um, several uh, m basically timers to unlock commodities, uh, but you don't have to complete them before the end of the week. Um, as each new week resets, weekly resets in four days, uh, the number of 
available missions just gets added to your total. So let's say, you know, I, w I took a week off. Well, and I come back, I now have two weeks of events I can complete as opposed to them being reset and I'm me losing out. Um, these are, you know, these commodities are really important. Uh, you get steel slabs, carbon plates, uh, titanium blocks, and diamond nano rods. Uh, they're very important. Uh, they're uh, used for building and upgrading your outposts, which basically define your station, more or less. Um, and for that reason, I highly recommend players um, purchase the subscription model type purchase, uh, get the premium permit. Um, they have a 7-day, a 14-day variant, and a 20, a full full month variant. Um, I recommend at least going a full month. Um, and uh, the reason why you want to apply this is you get extra commodities uh, a, out of every cache you open. Um, the idea is you need to have the bonus reward active by the time the event completes. So I like in this case if I didn't have it active I'd have three minutes to activate it before this completes in order to get that extra commodity. Let's see. Uh, there's an 18 spot next to me once the Zayok is cleared. Really? I don't know that spot. It's probably going to be somewhere around here, maybe, somewhere, something like that. But that's good to know. Maybe uh, once we destroy the station, if I see that's a thing. Uh, it would be a while before we conquer or take over the station. At least a few more days. I don't know if I want to wait that long, but it's a good idea. Uh, you know, finding those um, ideal spots, it's actually really hard to find them. Um, you know, because uh, you got to look in a, in this case, it's going to be like a three hex radius for your commerce hub. So you're going to look at the map and, you know, you could take a screenshot and note it, note it up like I did with Snagit. But you're going to be like, look at a spot. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, you know, so it's it's not that many spots there, and then I just gotta, like, go to the next spot, see, you know, count here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, um, now, that's, that's not great either, but, uh, you know, it can be really challenging, um, one cool thing I know the devs are kind of looking into, uh, again, it's an alpha, so we don't know if it's going to come or not, but they may give us a feature where we can like right click a hex or mouse over a hex with a tool and see how many fields are uh, within one, two, three radius of this hex, how many planets, how many moons, how much total resources. Um, so that way it makes exploration just a little bit easier for the newbie. Like I can mouse over here and see, okay, there's like, you know, 10 or 12 mining fields within three hex radius of this. That makes it really easy for me to identify. I want my commerce hub here, basically. You know what I mean? Uh, so that's a cool handy tool that they maybe may, that, that they're considering working on. I don't know what time though. Uh, let's see, what else? What are my first three companies? First company, Transgalactic Exports. Um, second company, Transgalactic Exports. Uh, third company is probably going to be, uh, hmm, probably gubernatorial colonial for the extra fortress claim range, just because I already know my third station is going to be going for the heavy ship assembly to max out the build speed on my gunships. Um, I honestly, Adi, I'm sorry. I don't like bellicose industries at all. Never used it once. I have plenty of those companies in the first server. I just never used it. I don't raid, so meh. Um, don't like it. Uh, in any case, it's it's just too specific for a specific playstyle, you know. So let's go ahead and select uh, a fleet. Yep, there we go. See, there's the level four mission I I showed you earlier. And uh, once you reveal the mission, the hints go away. Now we can see. Let's see, our next mission is probably right here. 
And that's going to be another... Ooh, that could be actually a level 5 mission. Ooh. Yeah, that looks like it could be a level 5 mission. Something like that. Because the corners intersecting goes right here. So that's pretty cool. No point for me to reveal that. There's no way I'm even close to finishing a level 5. Um, let's go ahead and set these to sabotage again. Power level our scout fleets. Every time I, I uh, send sabotage, I get more experience. Let's see. Um, you know, Adi, like, for the normal player, I don't necessarily recommend you go full transgalactic exports for your first station definitely um you know maybe your second station uh your second station is going to be focused around commerce hubs so two of your car station cards are going to be commerce hub cards so um it's kind of like that's the the primary purpose to uh the second station is carding for commerce hub and building that out um, and in the ideal location for a commerce hub. Um, for that reason, I went transgalactic exports just because I can use the bonuses from this station, the extra freighters uh, and resource production from this station to assist in future station build outs. Um, and, you know, just you can't go wrong with early resource production. Um, so, after that, um, your third station ideally will be in a solid place for uh, labor, for your capital, your, your new capital. Uh, you're going to start building up your new capital, but you're not going to change your capital right away, not until much later. Um, but you're going to try to find a spot. Let's see if we can find something. You're going to want to find a spot with decent labor and within range of a few planets. So... I kind of like to look around the suns because the planets tend to be a little closer together. There's not many labor spots. They've really rebalanced um, the la labor quite a bit. It's actually much harder to find uh, labor fields now. Ah, here, here's this is not bad. It's okay. Um, so, like, let's say I built a station here, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. I can hit both sets of planets, um, and there's some decent labor nearby. Looks like three fields right there. I can build mining facilities here and upgrade them for a pretty solid boost to my labor. So I might make my third station somewhere like here. Wherever there's just as much labor fields as possible for mining facilities, um, and start building up the station. Once the station is completely maxed out, then I'll go back to my first station, salvage a mining facility, uh, get the commodities back, and then um, build, uh, you know, change my capital over and start working on the labor, the extra labor buildings you get. So the idea is um, your capital is the only building that lets you build labor past level 10 for each of these. So most of your labor is going to be out of your capital, okay? And the idea is by finding uh, an ideal capital location with extra labor fields, you can get even more labor and stack as many uh, fleets as you can, um, you know, supplying labor from that one station. So that's what I recommend. First, uh, first station, resource production. Second station, uh, Co you know, ideally focus on the commerce hub and, you know, side benefit resource production or whatever you want. And then third station would be, uh, you know, your ideal capital location for labor, um, uh, you know, focused on that. After that, really, I mean, your choice. I know there are some players who are actually saying, you know what, I'm not going, I'm not going any industrial. I just want to raid a bunch of other players. That is a viable strategy, but I'm talking specifically for the newbies who want a, a fairly consistent, reliable start, um, you know, and they like the empire building aspect of it early on. After the third station, I would consider refocusing toward um, heavy ship assemblies, you know, the military line or uh, habitation domes, uh, which is the domain line. Uh, I would go probably more habitation domes if you want to, you know, focus on scouts primarily. Uh, 
but uh, the military line is just really nice for getting those heavy ships, man. The destroyers, the frigates, the recons, they're, they're incredibly powerful, especially when you get a bunch of those stations building them. Uh, you can field fleets fairly quickly. Uh, let's see, get another sip of my water. And if you want more labor, you can get more labor. You know, it's funny. A good solid portion of my my labor I get from upgrading my mining facilities. So like this one, a level five augmented, gives me 220 labor. This one gives me 440 labor. And it's, it's, this is probably the most cost-effective way of getting labor. <clears throat> so, you know, find those spots for your mining facilities to get you know just a I, I like to just aim for maximum points and so whether they be labor or whatnot um but if if it's a tie like you know e each one of these small ones is one point um each uh field of 80 is two points and each field of 120 is three points so i'll go you know one two three six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve right did I count that right? That doesn't sound right. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Nope, no, that's right. 12. Um, so that's 12 points right there. Uh, here, you know, I got 1, 2, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 points here. You know, I just aim for the maximum amount of points. Um, but if labor is really important to me, you know, I'll kind of choose the option that will make sure I can hit those extra labor nodes. Um, the alternative is do what I'm doing, build up your uh, basic labor production, and then you can also build up your administrator office and astro farm. Uh, those are generally the best ways early on to uh, get labor. Let's see. What do you tend to use station cards for on your generic stations? Uh, so for my first station, I like to prioritize uh, mining facility cards and pyro processing. Um, I tell you what, though, if you're a fairly active player and you just have been a little bit less, uh, if you've been a little spendy with your uh, with your credits and you you don't have the credits to buy your uh, commerce hub cards you might choose to skip the pyro processing card and actually choose um, what is it the ooh, where is it uh, you may choose the flare monitors for the extra two speed for your uh, industrials and then just run solar flares that way you know you really again want to go back and build up as much speed as you can Um, besides that, I mean, for heavy ship assembly stations, um, I would, I would probably choose, um, let's see, I would probably choose high command, maybe military engineers if I'm cheap on, on credits. Um, you can actually apply two of these cards, which gives a, a really nice bonus on, on a level five HSA station. Um, but for the last slot, there there are certain cards which are universally awesome um, for any empty slots you have available. Uh, to give you an idea on what those might be, um, generally, like military logistics, this is an amazing card. Very expensive. Pyro processing can be a good card, specifically on industrial stations. So can the magnetic containers. Um, loading bay as well. That's that's another good one. Um, you know, uh, op sleeping pods can be really important f for aggressive or defensive locations. Uh, let's see. I mean, really, most of these cards have a pretty pretty good utility to them. So it really depends on the situation. I like surveillance algorithm 
get you those extra covert operatives. You need them in order to spy enemy stations. This becomes really important in PvP. Um, the TGE franchise is also a, a pretty good one. Uh, it's pretty cheap on credits, but um, you get you know get five freighters. You you will never ever have enough freighters. You know you could basically cart everything freighters and still never have enough, um, especially later on. You know one thing that's pretty cool. So this this card is new for Alpha Nine Server Two, and I love it. Look at this. You are under military law, Mr. Darby. Deliver the requisite freighters and personnel, or you will have far greater worries than profit. Admiral Sultani. Guess what my last name is, guys? It's Sultani. <laughs> it's pretty awesome stuff, man. I love the devs. Uh, let's see. Let's go into Discord. Let's see what... Uh Let's see what people have been talking about. Uh, I don't see much uh, chatter. And I don't see many questions for the stream. I guess you guys don't have any newbie questions. Well, let's check in game chat. Nope, I don't see anything. What is the best legendary card to craft? That's... I mean... There are so many good legendary cards to craft, but I would say the best legendary card to craft... Um, early, like day one, day two, would probably be the cargo trailer followed up by the start harvester or the epic version, the Sanctum Harvester. You really want to build up your industrials, run those solar flares. It's a ton of great resources, but um, you know, you get the most amount of resources doing solar flares, but you kind of are incentivized to um, buy brokers and use them to balance out your resources. Um, alternatively, uh, you know, make sure you have enough credits to, per, uh, to manufacture your uh, commerce hub cards that's probably the most important legendary in the game for your commerce hub outpost i wonder if we can actually have two of these now i think they're still unique i don't know maybe the devs can let us know i know Giovanni. so looking at the at the at the current rankings, I'm ranked five right now, and Giovanni's just a bit ahead of me. And he's got some really nice tips and tricks as well. Uh, let's jump into the uh, oh, that's our Discord server. Let's jump into chat. Let's jump into voice chat real quick. <clears throat> Let's see here. Where are our voice chat channels? Here we go. Everyone welcome. Hello. Hey, Sentinel. I'm not sure if you can hear yourself on the stream or not. Stream? Yeah, we got Oh, you're streaming? Yeah, I'm streaming right now. Hey. Live stream? Yeah, I'm live streaming. Let me know if you guys can hear yourselves on uh, oh, shit. the stream. Okay. I just muted myself. I, mean, I don't need to speak. <laughs> I just came to say hello. Thanks for the <laughs> shout out. <laughs> oh yeah, I can hear it now. It's coming in. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna log off. I don't mean to interrupt your stream. That's mm -hmm. fine. We're uh, just kind of talking about uh, the game. Um, newbie, newbie questions. Newbie questions, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, Manvis, this guy, I don't know what he's doing. This is He's probably purchasing every accelerant in the game. and He's, he's blowing up. He has no accelerants left. There's no way he has accelerants left. 
<laughs> but that's, that's and meanwhile, really impressive. Meanwhile, I'm at number three, and I have six hours of accelerance left. <laughs> wow, that's impressive. Yeah, Zio, you've got it's... some kind of uh, maximum efficiency strategy, even you know a level up, up, up above me. You don't level use level. accelerance on anything less than 30% return. So what, you're talking them. command center, minutia, what else? Uh, exosuits. Exosuits, right. So exosuits uh, are the most underrated card in the game, yeah, early game. Exosuits, that's another good one. You can, because yeah, what you can do early game, because what I do early spent, game... You probably spent sorry, a decent but, amount of credits swapping out your, exo, your uh, exosuits. Yes, so what I do at the very start is I do the command center, don't use a single, a single accelerant on them. Mm -hmm. um, let the command center just get to 10 all by itself. And then you pop the... Minutia. Let's just take a look. See. Uh, pop Minutia after that. And then you throw on... I throw on the Dozer Exosuit. Yeah. And go all the way to level 10 on the Smelting Plant. And then once that's queued up, you switch out the Exosuit to the Military Building one. Mm -hmm. And as soon as you have those done, you do you can use Accelerants on those with the Minutia because you're getting 40% back. Yeah. You get 20% from the Command Center. You get 10% from the exosuits, and you get 10% from the minutiae. Yep. Um, and yeah, you're getting 40% back on your accelerants. It's it's so efficient to do. Yeah, and if you've got a fat wallet, you just buy all the accelerants. You could do that as well. And Actually, I still have stuff forget, I can buy. <laughs> let's not forget about uh, page two, getting these uh, construction plans is really helpful for day one, as well as the Absolutely. building queue extension. If you just buy a shit ton of these building queue extensions... Uh, and one of these, and you stack them all on your first starting station, you get additional benefit from your Minutia uh, card, as well as, um, you know, all, all, all the other duration kind of card. Well, basically Minutia. I mean, yeah. and it, le it lets you actually sleep at night. <laughs> so. I just let my, uh, my production buildings go while I'm sleeping. Oh. I see. Uh, okay, let's see if I can turn on my Discord overlay. Just got my first 15 gunships. Nice. Too cool. I don't know how to turn that on. That stuff is... Oh, yeah, really? Spy report me? Send 50, Another big uh, thing early game is making a plan on what tasks you want to achieve. Like, for example, for me personally, I want to have, like, before my third station is up, I want to have the tasks that requires you to get multiple buildings to level 10 so you can get the third minutiae and get the third station going again. It's very good to actually go through the tasks and actually notice what cards you can get for free. And be able to time that. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know how to get that overlay going, guys. Sorry. So, they, yeah, that's Giovanni talking. Yeah, so, I mean, everyone's kind of identified their own... Oop, I gotta keep my cues full. Quick, quick. Q, Q. <laughs> Let's actually apply uh, let's apply another industrial card. Go full bore. 103 ships. Industrials. I mean, I'm building them fast. I'm going to have like four full fleets here soon. Get more res production in there. All right. Looks like that sabotage is done. Almost done le power leveling these fleets. All right. More questions.
you probably already covered a lot of it, but tips for carding and builds for new players going industrial. Okay, so your first station, uh, you want to you wanna avoid going level 10 buildings except for command center and these two buildings right here, sm smelting plant and shipyard. Besides that, avoid going level 10. It's a resource dump right off the bat, day one. Um, try to level up your buildings e efficiently. So uh, you've got achievements at level one, level three, level five, level seven, and then level 10 buildings. So, um, you know, basically level them up uh, evenly because they're the most resource efficient. Uh, if you're ever low on resources, focus on building um, the basic resource production buildings. So that way you keep your queues full. They're very, uh, very cheap but take a long time to build. Um, as soon as you get to station level two, which should be fairly early, you know, you really want to uh, prioritize your command center uh, as quickly as you can. Um, but as soon as you hit station level two, you're going to want to build one level of each of these and start building your uh, mining facilities. Spend as much resources as you can and commodities in building and upgrading <clears throat> one of them to level five uh, or alternatively you can level them up evenly just make sure you get to level five sooner than later because that unlocks an achievement which gives you a mining cabal card um, and that lets you actually place and build your fourth mining facility once you build your mining facilities and you start upgrading them um, you really want to make sure you keep upgrade uh, building your industrials uh, industrials because uh, you're eventually going to want to be able to run solar flares <clears throat> solar flares with those industrials. Uh, but the carding for your, your station should have repair drones and miners guild to start. Um, it increases the radius of your mining facility and your miners guild. Um, you can, I, I'm not, I kind of already went over all of this, this video. So, you know, you can always go back and rewatch the video for um, steps beyond that. But really maximizing the efficiency of your mining facilities. The ROI is really good. The break even is very quick. Um, and then, yeah, just build up your, uh, your buildings uh, until you can upgrade, you know, continue to focus on upgrading your station because level four station actually has a huge claim, which allows you to, it actually increases your resource production as well. So keep your queues full. That's what I can say. Do you find you get enough labor for your endgame armada without double carding for mining facilities, or do you card for labor MFs on some stations? Uh, my first alpha, my first server of Alpha 9, I placed my capital in a location ideal for labor um, for my mining facilities, so I can't tell you whether or not it'll be enough without it. Um, but I would say plan on finding a decent location for your mining facilities that give at least five points of labor, uh, preferably six, uh, for your capital station. Went through a lot of work finding that spot. <laughs> Did you find yours already, Zio, for this server? For this one? Yeah. Um, well, I'm going to do, I'm going to be a lot different of a play style this, this server so i'm probably going to do the same the same type of layout for my capital but just in a different spot um i'm going to be i'm going to be doing i think mining colony for my for my capital and and uh and labor since like the play style that i'm going for is not going to be all that labor intensive early game at least like late game i can get the labor i need so you um, want to go like for for a full capital armada, but if you're pretty going much industrial with your capital, that I, I did the math already. I'm looking at nine. Uh, pull up the math here. Nine, I think it's nineteen, nineteen and a half thousand labor that's going to be in the capital. Well, wow, that's amazing. So, how many, how many uh, capital fleets is that? How many cap uh, like uh, of the capital ships? You mean? Yeah. Uh, that's a good question. Uh, I think that's, I mean, that's got to be a decent amount of capital fleets you can provide solo. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I was I was doing it with my gunships on the last server. So I went uh, 
I went half dome in my last server, and I think I just broke 18k on that. So I basically just fleeted all of my gunships out of that out of that station. So the idea for all the new players, what we're talking about here, is that um, there are three specific buildings that you, that are incredibly powerful. It's Space Academy, uh, Scout Command, and Transit Nexus. Um, these give really important stat bonuses to the fleets that um, the station supplies labor to. So if I have Carrier and Dreadnought, these are capital ships. If I have these fleets being supplied by this station with these buildings leveled, leveled up, um, I get really important stat bonuses for maximizing the effectiveness of my fleets okay if i've got you know like i don't have space academy here space academy gives bonuses to corvettes patrol ships destroyers and frigates okay so if i have patrol ships supplied by this station i'm not really playing efficiently because i don't get those um those, these stat bonuses unless I have the building level leveled up. What Zio is talking about is his primary capital station where a majority of his labor is going to be is actually going to be industrial. Okay, And the industrial side focuses on giving a huge benefit to capital ships. Now capital ships are really slow to build. They're also the most important, uh, I should say the most powerful ships in the game. Uh, you know, hammer versus hammer. Um, so the idea, you know, in me knowing that Zio is going to aim for a, a full carrier armada with his capital, because most of his labor is going to give benefit to capital ships, Zio, I'm thinking, I'll make my carriers and just give them to you. It's 12, 12 fleets, by the way. 12 carrier fleets, that's... Good. From my capital alone. Ungodly. <laughs> so I'm going to have the same capital, but not for my carriers... It's mostly going to be for um, my industrials, believe it or not. I want to go full farm mode, no PvP, you know, just go, you know, full farm mode, augment players. Uh, I'm aiming to see if I can solo build a forward operating base and solo build the Alliance Station, maybe. Um, I'm really curious if you can do that. I, that's, that's what I'm aiming for. I want to go just, you know, except for one station, which is going to just be gunship production, um... I want to see how many transgalactic empire co companies I can make and what kind of streams and what kind of freighting I can achieve as a solo player. Um, so that's kind of the deal there. Um, but yeah, yeah, Zio, if, that's what, if you want to be active in PvP, I'll give you my carriers. I wasn't planning on it, but now you got me, now you got me thinking. <laughs> hey, better you if you're going to be active. It's true. Right? Uh, and that's the thing, guys. With your carriers and your heavy ships, you want to be um, conservative with them. Don't let them get destroyed easily. The only time you want to bring them out on the field is when everyone else is bringing them out on the field and you have a stacked defense. I'm talking set up to 70 fleets stacked. Um, the idea is you want to alpha strike and wipe out your enemy in the first round of combat. Combat takes three rounds. And if you have enough firepower to uh, to beat their hit points after tactics are applied, um, to wipe them out in the first round, that's the, that's the least amount of ships you'll lose. Um, and so, you know, don't just send a bunch of half-built fleets with your carriers or capitals in defense unless it's like an extreme emergency last day of the game kind of deal it's better to preserve those carrier fleets and keep them building up because again they build very slowly and stack them together with other carrier fleets from other players and uh you know completely wipe out the enemy uh let's see here any other questions have either of you guys calculated how many uh, capital fleets you can make in one game? Uh, I could do that. It'll take me a little bit of time. Well, yeah, it depends. Um, kind of depends on when you build up your... Um, it depends on how quickly you level up and um, yeah. how quickly you level up your capital ship assembly station which you get i believe at level 45 yeah um but you know assuming let's say assuming seven weeks 
Maybe... Yeah, seven weeks sounds about right. That was my main strategy in the first server of this iteration, was hitting all of those, all of those level milestones before everyone. As soon as I did that, I literally, like, my influence just, like, kind of plummeted. It didn't really keep up. Because um, I think, I, I don't know, I held number one with, like, a massive lead for the first week and a half. And then after that, I was like, okay, maybe time. And now I'm sitting at, like, 110 or something on the rank. But you know, my navy is nasty. And influence is a good indicator early on. Um. It's a good indicator of how well you're playing early on, but uh, at a certain point, you gotta shift gears, shift focus on maximizing your military uh, armada. Uh, maximize your military and start participating in PvP objectives, uh, taking those Grand Terrestrial points from your neighbors, from the enemy sectors, um, and forming your coalition. So, you know, influence does take a, kind of a backseat, uh, and it allows other players to kind of catch up with you on the influence track. Uh, but the key then becomes who's got the stronger military. Because, hey, you may have caught up to me on influence, but my fleets are on your front doorstep, and I'm already starting to destroy your stations. You know what I mean? Um, I forget who I was, I forget I was talking to about this. I think it was Old and Faded, and we were talking about how the people who are from like 1 to 25 this is like week 3 or 4 the people who are ranked like 1 to 25 are not as scary as the people from like 25 to 100 because there's so many from like 1 to 25 that did not have a whole lot of hex claim but there were some people from like 25 to 100 who had an insane amount of hex claim and it was just really scary because you don't really know where they're at in their navy size and it's just it's a really massive wild card if you're in that small range and you all you've been doing is just building up building up your fleets and getting the hexes that you need for those fleets it's it's just scary you know it does seem it does seem like habitation domes need a little bit more of a boost or benefit um it seems like there's not enough labor uh, what is it not enough labor coming from them um no. you know the zorka alliance in in the first server they had an incredibly effective strategy. I actually think they were up until it took our whole, practically our whole coalition to wipe them out. But as a singular alliance, I found that that Zorka alliance were the strongest in the server. Even um, they had an insane amount of heavy ship assemblies, um, and they got their fleet slots by using their fortresses. Um, to, to unlock additional fleet slots. So it kind of checks off a few of the boxes, you know. You use your capital station for labor. You got your um, fortresses providing extra claims so, to unlock more fleet slots so you can have more fleets. You got your heavy ship assemblies building heavy ships and nothing but heavy ships and in, in as many stations as possible. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, those ships, especially when all stacked together can just wipe out anyone coming at you. Uh, it's an incredibly effective strategy. Um, and I'd like to see how that, you know, works out this game, this time around. The main problem sure with them doing game. that was, the, the main problem with them doing that was, once those ships were gone, though, there really wasn't a whole lot they could do. Because the main factor that came into came into play was a lot of was attrition for a lot of their bigger players, and once a, some of their bigger players kind of fizzled off, like there was maybe like a quarter of them that fizzled off around week three or four, and as soon as those pit players were gone, they had one big mass of carriers and one big mass of heavy ships, and then after that, once we kind of chipped away at that, there wasn't much left. So. The main thing with going with that strategy is you have to have a bunch of people who are going to go the full marathon and keep going. But you know what? I mean, they kind of played around the weakness uh, inherent in this game, which is player activity. Um, yep. You know, people are not all 100% active for, for PvP day, you know, day in, day out, multiple times a day even. Um, in this game. And so the idea is, let's just have everyone who's not 
totally hardcore about this game, build heavy ships, give them to our active players, and those guys will mm -hmm. stack up defenses, which made them an incredibly tough nut to crack. Um, yep. You know, eventually we wiped them out. We, it took us basically the entire alpha to wipe out their one sector, and those guys were had tenacity. You know, they were relentless in their defense, even down Honestly, to the last we just... guy. We just finished off the like their one of their main last guys. I think it was yesterday. Right, and there's and like what three or started. four days left in alpha. Week three, we started, and we just took out pretty much one of their last main guys. I think yesterday. Right. So and what I got to give it to him. He was he was good. I got to give it to him. Yeah. He played some they serious played little smart. mind games. They you know yeah. they played smart. They ninja built missile batteries. They were they played very active. They funneled all their ships to their active players and. Uh, stacked all their ships in an, an incredibly hard to break defense. They did make some mistakes offensively, but um, you know, <laughs> you you, you kind of have to do something at some point. Mm -hmm. I really want to try and figure out this server how far you can take fleet cap reasonably, and how early you can get massive fleet cap. Like my plan is to actually just build up a ton of plus one radius stations, a few fortress stations, so I have at least some heavy ship assembly. And then just see how quickly I can build a massive armada, and whether I can overwhelm people in the first few. Yeah, I mean, the, the active players are really going to want to make sure they have enough labor. The semi-active players will probably want a healthy mix between heavy ship assembly resource production, and uh, labor. Um, the less active players uh, are going to want to focus more on resource production and heavy ship assemblies and donate those ships to their allies. That's kind of the way I see it. There's a little bit of a trade-off that you do by doing that, though. Is I was thinking about that as well. Um, because I remember in, in the first server, I had I had like a, a 12 or 13 station plan. But once I got to like station 6 or 7, yes. you, kinda, you kind of start realizing that troop carriers are going to become like the lifeblood of what you're going to be doing on the front lines of your combat. I mean, if you're going to, if you want to make a massive military and overwhelm people, you need to have a station that is close enough to the spot where you're going to be fighting. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have that, and you just made a whole bunch of stations that you're just making the armada and getting your fleet cap with, you're really sacrificing a lot of time to have those fleets travel. And I think that time that is, is used just to move those fleets back and forth to a yeah, base that's probably not even going to be yours, which is a big deal in itself. It's going to be really tough to control a massive armada like that because you're going to be making all those stations pretty far away from where the main fight is going to be for a vast majority of the server. So it's it's nice to have all those fleets, but having stations in good spots is, I think, a lot more valuable. Like I'd rather have 35 fleets and have a station in a good spot where I can use them then have the full 45 fleet cap and ha don't not have a station in a good spot where I can start shotgunning with combat. Yeah, definitely. So I got a Natasha fur. I'm so happy nice. about that. I, nice. Uh, so yeah, uh, that means probably my third station after I hit Command Center 10, I can apply that Natasha fur. Well, actually, I might apply Natasha fur right away. Get Command Center to 10. Then apply minutia and try utilizing your strategy with the exosuits and the schematics. Yeah. Um, and with minutia, like holy shit, I don't what know. Is that, 55, Actually, fifty-five percent return. That's here's insane. the thing, Natasha for like increases the cost of the buildings by twenty percent. Minutia kind of brings that down to just an in, a ten percent increase in cost. The mm -hmm. reason why I like I actually like doing um, Minutia and Natasha Fur together for the basic resource production buildings because it's a huge drop in the construction time for them as well as um, only a minor increase in cost. 
But here's the thing, the increase in the, the cost of these basic resource production buildings are really cheap. So like you're kind of avoiding the high cost of um, upgrading, uh, 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 you're avoiding the high cost penalty from Natasha Fur by building these, um, but you're getting a huge time reduction uh, from Minutia and Natasha together in building these buildings. So that's that's what I like doing with them. Um, I'm a huge I'm a huge advocate on scaling the cards that you use, especially if they are one time use cards. And I, I like the point, but honestly, I like getting more time back than saving resources because resources you can get, you're going to get resources. Resources are just, you're going to get. I like using Natasha Fur on uh, tier three and tier four buildings on a station mm -hmm. because they're going to cost more, but at the same time, the amount of time that you're getting back from it is exponentially more and the scale of it the scale of the card use of natasha fur i personally think is is way better um because i could care less about the resources because they're, they're going to come in the, the resource i i don't have a problem having the resources like i at the moment i have 30 tasks saved up with resources ready to dump yeah, in my stage i mean if you're if you're healthy on resources by all means stacking with um the schematics and the the dozer exosuits and whatnot um, is definitely the better strategy but uh you know it's if it, it, well it requires a, a an expert or master level uh of understanding in this game to really utilize that strategy and then applying your accelerants uh once you've got all those bonuses going to maximize on accelerant usage it is yeah. honestly zero it's a master level strategy and it, it requires a very fundamental in-depth knowledge of the game so what I'm doing right now is dropping my industrials uh, so I can max out the gain here never send more more industrials than you need to I got 289 in hangar. Nope, make that 292. So I, I can probably start hitting three solar flare fleets at a time, which is perfect. Because now I can convert this scout, this uh, max level scout fleet, to industrial. Let's just make sure there's no cards. Yep, no cards. And now my max level scout fleet is a max level industrial fleet. Now I can max that out there. And now I need to card this. Let's see, I need oh, I am I am struggling. I need credits. Hmm. So I need to break some stuff down. Anyways, I gotta move. I got some stuff I gotta take care of, but yeah. it's been a good time. I'm glad you're not completely taking a break. <laughs> well, <laughs> I, I am actually. This is going to be me doing, being very, um, very, uh, what is it? Uh, relaxed. Passive. Yeah, very yeah. passive. You know, logging in maybe once every day or so. Right on. Alrighty, I'm out. See ya. Tough call. That should be good. So we'll go epic and then we'll go industrial. Yep, we'll build craft this. Eh. I suppose that should be good enough. I probably don't need a legendary. And we'll craft. Epic cargo. And then now we'll apply them. We'll go ahead and apply the 20 here as well. Okay, so now I can start doing three solar flare fleets at a time. 
Let's apply a org as well. Yep, I can one-shot that now. That's a ton of metal. I'm already actually close to the cap, so I need to ra actually uh, upgrade my warehouse again. Actually, I need to apply accelerants. See, that's the thing, man. You, <laughs> you got to get that warehouse. I might actually exchange some of my metal. Since I got so much metal coming in here, I'm going to use my brokers. Exchange metal for gas since I seem to be low on that. I need to try a plasma cargo strategy at some point soon because I wish I had anywhere near as many resources as you. <laughs> yeah, um, you know, it's it's bittersweet because you really uh, become dependent on brokers. Um, you don't have to use brokers. You can convert, you know, for three to one. Um, but, uh, you know, it's less efficient that way. So, uh, you know, every resource counts in your first few days of playing the game. Let's see here. Uh, any questions? I don't see any questions right now. Keep looking for them. Nope, nothing on Discord. Let's check YouTube. We've already been go going on for almost two hours here. What is the meaning of life? I will not tell you the meaning of life. It's 42. Uh, yeah, so I think we'll just end the live stream here, guys. It's been a couple hours. Um, it was kind of an AMA. Ask me anything. Uh, check out this video. Um, refer to your friends. Share. Subscribe. Like. And, uh, you know, more to follow. Till then. Till next time. Fly safe.